It is the wee hours of the morning on a Friday night, and it is the worst possible time to shoot a vlog. Because in the wee hours of the morning on a Friday night, New York City is a beast, and that beast is restless. Just outside of these walls, giant metal machines are eating everybody's trash. Other metal monsters are honking in discontent, and drunken ogres are falling all over themselves. Ogres code for yuppies and jocks, by the way. Just thought you should know that. But nonetheless, here we are. I must admit I have been a very bad boy, because on my Facebook and Twitter pages I took a poll recently and I said, what kind of vlog would you like to see next? And the overwhelming winner was Ask Voltaire. However, then it occurred to me that I had no choice but to make a newsletter vlog because I didn't do one for April and April's almost over. So here we are with the April 2012 Voltaire newsletter at the Lair of Voltaire. But don't despair because my next vlog will be Ask Voltaire number three, I promise. Well, those of you who follow my antics know that uh, last month was a bunny apocalypse. I released a series of vinyl toys along with Toy 2R in collaboration with my favorite online role-playing game, Adventure Quest Worlds, and it was a line of vinyl bunnies. I think they're right there. Daddy Bunny, Silver Screen Edition Daddy Bunny, Death Bunny, Sleaster Bunny, and... Sleaster Deddy, which is Deddy disguised as Sleaster Bunny. Now I have to tell you, you can't see the rest of the lair right now, but if you could, you'd realize that we're surrounded by boxes. But at least you can see me now, because if you were here a week ago, you wouldn't be able to, and I wouldn't be able to see you, because there was a wall of vinyl bunny <laughs> toy boxes uh, separating the camera and myself. But uh, there were so many orders last week that a lot of those bunnies have found their way to happy homes somewhere across America and the world. I think the furthest one away went to Indonesia. So if you were the, one of the people who ordered one of the vinyl bunnies from the bunny apocalypse, let me say thank you so much for allowing me to have some space back. Now, I'm also, uh, I don't know if I should say eager to report, happy to report, but uh, how about I just report that uh, the two rarest figures in that series, the uh, Silver Screen Edition Deddy Bunny, as well as the Death Bunny, the black and white and silver ones, were only available as part of the full set, and those sold out immediately. Not just here at the Lair of Voltaire, but also at Hero Mart, which is Adventure Quest's online store. Uh, now I'm told that Toy 2R, the company that manufactured them, will be selling them on their website, so I will post a link so you can go look for them there. However, I do have some Daddy Bunnies left, not many. I have some Sleaster Bunnies left, uh, and probably more importantly, I do have the Sleaster Daddy, which is a Voltaire.net store exclusive. There's one way and one way only to get that figure, and that is through either me at a show or through my website, Voltaire.net slash store. So if you would like to get your hands on this exclusive figure, come find me there. And while we're at it, there's another figure that only I have in the entire world, and that is Urkor Malravenous. Here's one. Urkor Malravenous, Daddy's true form. We released this one at the end of last summer, and I still have some of these, and uh, I'm the only one who has some of these. So if you'd like some, go look for them at voltaire.net slash store. While I'm on the subject of vinyl toys, I just got a sneak peek at the next vinyl toy release. It is also a vinyl bunny and it is called Death Bunny Nitro. So it is related to my little friend Death Bunny here, except this one is glow in the dark. 
and we spooky kids love glow in the dark. So I think you're going to be really excited about that one. I'm also talking to the nice folks at Toy Tour in Hong Kong about possibly making a couple of variants. So there'll be a couple of different versions of Death Bunny Nitro glow in the dark and of course as always it will come with a code to unlock a digital pet at adventure quest worlds and rumor has it that that pet does it glow in the dark i think it's more like an x-ray i think it flashes from time to time and that's uh kind of crazy and horrific <laughs> And now, for Human of the Month. You know, I have a hobby, a pastime, if you will, and that is looking for daddy bootlegs. I don't know why I find it so amusing, but uh, for instance, when I was in uh, Australia, touring in Australia, I spent most of my time in each city scouring Chinatown for daddy bootlegs. It's kind of like this weird symptom of success. You know, I feel like if my character is being bootlegged out there in the world, that maybe I'm doing something right, because somewhere, Chinese factories think that this is successful and they should copy it. <laughs> it's a bittersweet victory. Nonetheless, I spend a good deal of time looking for Deddy bootlegs. Now, something caught my eye the other day on eBay, and it was an unauthorized garage kit of Deddy. But not just Deddy, it was of an illustration from one of the Deddy books. And the craziest part was that the drawing wasn't by me. It was a piece of guest art by a very, very talented man by the name of Paul Komoda. And Paul Komoda had done this drawing of Deddy with tentacles coming out all over the place and it was strangling these two baby lambs. I would also like to point out that uh, I just watched the remake or reimagining of The Thing the other night, and while watching the behind the scenes, apparently Paul Komoda was one of the guys who designed all of those incredibly Cthuloid, tentaculoid creatures in that film. Well, in any case, there I was, and I was on eBay, and I'm noticing this image, and I've never seen it in 3D before, so it confused the hell out of me, but it was a sculpture of that drawing by Paul Komoda of Deddy. So I emailed the nice person who was selling this kit and I said, uh, hey, uh, beautiful work there, but you realize that Deddy's a licensed character. Uh, I don't know if you should really be manufacturing and, and selling Deddy stuff without letting me know. Well, the young man was very, very uh, kind and he was very nice and he said, I meant no harm, I mean no offense, I'm just a fan of Deddy. I thought this was a really cool image. I thought it'd make a great garage kit. And uh, so we chat a little bit and he offered to send me one and he did. And it's in this box. I know it sounds like a box of bones, but it really is this Deddy Garage Kit. That's one of the lambs. That's Deddy's head. And there's lots and lots of tentacles and all sorts of bizarre, toothy, jaw-like pieces. Quite frankly, the guy did a beautiful job. His name's Andy Cope. And his profile on eBay is, I wrote it down somewhere, Demon in My Head, with no spaces. Demon in My Head. Well, I was so grateful that he was kind enough to send me one of these that I, I, I told him that I'd let people know where they could get one from him. And he said, you can find them on my Facebook page. Consider getting one of these from him. It's gorgeous. It is really, really gorgeous. It's really well done. Here's an image of a finished one that Andy made and painted. You can see how amazing it is. I will warn you, this is not a kit for children or even amateurs. If you don't own a Dremel tool and never heard of plumber's epoxy or 500 epoxy, this might not be for you. But if you are a model maker, get one. And the man is an artist and a gentleman. And that is why Andy Cope is Human of the Month. We're the kids in America, whoa! We're the kids in America! Oh, oh, hi. 
probably wondering what I was doing. I, I, I must admit, I, I'm, I'm kind of a fan of karaoke. But you know what? If you're a fan of my music, and I'm going to have to guess that maybe you are, because why else would you listen to me blather on and on and on about almost nothing? <laughs> if you do enjoy my music and you do enjoy singing, well, I've got a great surprise for you because I've just released my first ever instrumental album. These are instrumental versions of my most recent album, Riding a Black Unicorn. Down the side of an erupting volcano while drinking from a chalice filled with the laughter of small children. Right. So if you enjoy singing my songs, well, hot, holy hell, you can now sing them with the original backing tracks backing you. The album is called, maybe not so ironically, Riding a Black Unicorn Instrumentals. And it is already available on cdbaby.com. So, go pick yourself up a copy and sing along to the tracks. If you're a writer, you might also find it to be great, inspiring background music. Also, if you're a filmmaker, I uh, strongly encourage you to use these tracks. I have an extremely liberal policy concerning the use of my music in indie productions, in student projects, and things of that nature. All you have to do is buy the track, email me, tell me I'd like to use this track for this project, and I will send you the credits. And that's pretty much it. So, you know, 99 cents, you've got a song for your film. I think the going rate these days is like, $50,000 to use somebody's song in your movie. So, 99 cents, $50,000, it's a bit of a difference. It's a bit of a difference, and I think it's a difference that helps. I think it's a difference that's good for filmmakers. So, listen to those tracks. You might be able to use it in a music video or a, a film of yours. You know what this is? Those of you who really closely follow my antics may remember that I found this cassette while I was shooting my short film, Odokuro. Now, uh, it's a picture of me. I look a whole lot like uh, Captain Morgan on there, and on the top it says, Cave Canum, to you Americans. In Latin, that reads, Kawekanem, and it means beware of the dog. And before I was signed to Project Records, and before I even played my first show, I was writing songs and recording them with the belief that I was going to start a band called Kawekanem. And so uh, I found not only this cassette, but the dat that contains the masters for a handful of the songs. And the songs are When You're Evil, Ex-Lover's Lover, Anniversary, Underground, which ended up not coming out until uh, several years later when I made Almost Human. Um, All the Way Down is on there as well. A song called Life that was written by the gentleman who was producing my demo, a gentleman named Scott Patinsky. And last but not least, on some a warbled old cassette, I found an old version of Raven's Land, and I have taken the time to get them remastered. And so, that album, the Kawe Kanem Demos, will be available on CDBaby.com in the next few days. So, if you'd like to hear some of the nascent beginnings of, of some of the songs of mine that you already know, check out that album because it is different. Uh, the songs were more intimate, there was no percussion, there was harpsichord on some of them. It really is, I think, kind of interesting to hear how these songs began and, well, you already know how they ended up. So look for the uh, Kawe Kanem demos on cdbaby.com sometime between now and next week. And speaking of Project Records, my very first album, The Devil's Briss, was released by Project just over 13 years ago, which means maybe we should change the name to The Devil's Bar Mitzvah. Nonetheless, to celebrate, Project has released this uh, new edition. We have uh, redesigned the packaging from those awful, awful, awful plastic jewel cases, which will be in landfills for the rest of time, to this environmentally friendly digipack. And then just to make things a little bit more spicy for you, inside you will find the eight-page lyric booklet that came with the original one, a sticker, and last but perhaps not least, this art card. 
On the one side it says, uh, the devil's bris, 13 years later it's still so easy being evil, and bris is crossed out and it says bar mitzvah on it. And then on the other side is a lovely photo of yours truly when I was young and thin and pretty. And I signed them. Oh yeah, I signed a thousand of these. My hand almost fell off. But I was so happy to do it, knowing that it was going to go to your house. <laughs> so presumptuous. So if you're feeling nostalgic, go and get yourself a copy of the 13th year anniversary edition of The Devil's Breast at project.com while supplies last. As I mentioned last month in the first newsletter ever, the rights to my two books, What is Goth and Painted Black, uh, have reverted back to me so I can now do whatever I want with them. I might uh, re-release them, I might re-release them uh, as ebooks. I'm not entirely sure, but uh, I don't have a lot of free time on my hands these days, so I'm not entirely sure that that's something that's going to happen this year, but uh, possibly next year there will be uh, an ebook version of What is Goth and Painted Black. We'll have to see. Why don't I have any time? Well, because when I'm not mailing vinyl bunnies all over the world or playing shows in far-flung places, I am writing my first novel, Call of the Jersey Devil. It's based on a screenplay that I wrote, and holy hell does it take a long time to write a novel. But it has been an incredibly fun process. I've really, really enjoyed it so far. I think I'm about halfway in. And uh, I hope that I'll have it done by the end of the year, so uh, stay tuned. If you follow me on Facebook, I've been posting excerpts from Call of the Jersey Devil, so if you don't already, please find me at facebook.com slash Voltaire fan page. And that's it for books. So, uh, where's the, this crazy bastard going to be next? Maybe somewhere near you? Um, well, my next show is one of my favorite shows of the year to do. It's the Steampunk World's Fair in New Jersey, run by the same lovely people who do Wicked Fair, which is uh, a hell of a time. Uh, and that's going to be May 18th. It's the weekend of May 18th, but I think I'll be there May 18th. Uh, and Besides performing, I will also be attending the absinthe tasting, and I'll be tasting all of the absinthe. Maybe if you come and buy a ticket to the absinthe tasting, you might uh, actually get some before I drink it all. And then I'm off to Seattle and Portland. I'm going to uh, show my short stop motion films at Crypticon. Crypticon is a horror sci-fi convention in Seattle. Uh, that's going to be on May 25th. And that same night, I'll be playing in my favorite club in Seattle, El Corazón. That's an all-ages show, so everybody is welcome to come. The next night, I will be at the Hawthorne Theater in Portland, Oregon. Also an all-ages show. I think maybe my first in Portland. So if you're under 18 or under 21, I guess, and if you've never been able to come to show of mine before in Portland, now is the time. There's a traveling goth convention called Convergence. I have performed several times at Convergence over the years in different cities. This year it's in Buffalo, New York, and I'll be performing there on Sunday, June 17th. Then after that I'm off to Play On Con in Birmingham, Alabama, my third year in a row? Third? Fourth? I think it's my third year in a row at, uh, in Birmingham, Alabama on July 28th, so come see me there. And I have an inkling that I will be at Dragon Con again this year, and that is my biggest show of the year in Atlanta, Georgia, Labor Day weekend. There's always shows being added. So never miss a show near you. Go to Voltaire.net and sign up for the mailing list. And every month I send out a newsletter, kind of like this one, except in typed out form, and it will go to your inbox and you will know when I'm performing near you. And please, God, please, somebody, Cthulhu, uh, uh, Mother Earth, the forces that be, can we please make a European tour happen this year? I mean, what are we waiting for, folks, really? Uh, it's time. It's time for it to happen. I get so much email from Europe. I've been getting a lot of email from Greece lately. Um, I think it's time for European tour, so let's set our minds to it, okay? Uh, if you have a goth promoter in your city somewhere in Europe, 
tell them you want to see me. If there's a horror convention, go and tell the organizers there's this crazy guy we want to see, and maybe we can make a European tour happen. And while I'm ranting about touring the world, holy hell, I've been getting so much email from Brazil. Brazil. Let's do a show in Brazil. <laughs> I would love to do a show in Brazil. Oh my God, I'm holding back the urge to sing uh, Goth from Ipanema. I think Brazil. I think a show there is eminent. Also Argentina. I get a lot of email from there. And of course my friends in Mexico. It's been a while since I've done Mexico City. I was just in Monterrey. But it's time for a Mexico City show. Let's make that happen too. So just set your sights. Keep it in your head. Tell everyone you can think of telling who gives a rat's ass and... Maybe together we can make it so that I come to your town. Last but not least, here I sit again at the Lair of Voltaire by myself. My co-host is still missing. My co-host Orville Deadenbacher. Now, you know, I thought it was kind of a joke at first, but I mean, it's really, it's ridiculous. This is going on forever. I, I came into the Lair one day, he wasn't here. I just figured he went out for a walk or something. But I mean, it's been like a month or two. It's I'm worried. Orville, I don't even want to think about where you might be. You know, a lovely lady on Twitter sent me this photograph. And I think that's, I think that's the kind of thing it's going to take. I think that's what it's going to take. I think it's going to take missing posters and wanted posters and have you seen this desiccated corpse posters. I, really, I, I, I'm at wit's end, so Orville, if you're watching wherever you are, I just want you to know that this space next to me is preposterously empty feeling and I want you back. I want you back and you know what? I'm not doing, I'm not doing an Ask Voltaire until you're sitting next to me because it just won't be funny without you. So please Orville, come home. And that wraps it up for the Voltaire Video Newsletter, April 2012 edition. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe so that when I make more of these, you'll know about it. Thank you for joining me here at The Lair of Voltaire. Grab the chair, boys. We got another bucket kicker. Happy birthday, my old friend. It seems this horror show will never end. Any moment's your last breath Here is to another day closer to death